everyone, welcome to Eagle Talks Football. We're back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Arsenal and we got a couple problems and we got some solutions that are coming through. Arsenal, of course, have too many players. At this moment in time, Mikel Arteta has about 33 first team players. So how many of those players that are currently in the team do you guys think we're going to be able to sell before the end of the transfer window? And how many of those players will Edu have to turn into the Terminator once again to terminate some of their contracts to try to get rid of them? This is what we're going to be talking about. Also, the transfer window has absolutely turned into silly season. Guys, we are not signing any more players until we sell some people. So I don't want to hear about Mbappe. I don't want to hear about Neymar. I don't want to hear about Ivan Tony. I don't want to hear about a striker, a goalkeeper, nothing. Because it doesn't make sense to be continuously buying players before getting rid of some of the players you currently have. We are devaluing the assets that we currently have in our squad, and we need to get as much money as we can for them before we look at buying any more players in. So Arsenal fans, calma. We are not selling any more players. We are not buying any more players until we make some sales. And that sales could be Eddie and Ketia, potentially. We're going to talk about it because Eddie and Ketia is linked to a Premier League club. And I don't know if you guys heard about it, but they're serious. And we could potentially sell Eddie and Ketia this transfer window. Could that mean we keep Balogun? We'll find out. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get this show started. I'm on the road to 25K. Help me get there. Here we go. Yes, 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 people, what's going on? So before we go any further, we're going to get into some of the silly stuff, and then we're going to talk about the serious stuff. As you guys know, Arsenal, silly season is fully amongst us, and everybody is going absolutely crazy. There's so much stuff floating around, potential signings, potentially outgoings, potential incomings, and it's like, can we just calm down for a second and realize we've just made three signings already. We have a large squad and Mikel Arteta has spoke about how big this squad is and how many players we need to get rid of in this squad. Like just, I think there was quotes just the other day that uh, I, I'm going to pull up the quotes right now, but Mikel Arteta was basically talking about how many players we have in the squad and the squad size. And he said, we have about 30 players here, which is unsuitable for this team. 30 players. So how many players do you think we can get rid of? First, I'll name some. I think we can get rid of Runnerson. I think we can get rid of Cedric. We can get rid of Holding. We can get rid of Trusty. We can get rid of Lokonga. We can get rid of Pepe, Marquinhos, even potentially one of Balogun or Eddie Nketia. That's at least nine to 10 players we can get rid of. So trim down the squad, trim down the fat. That's what we need to do at this moment in time. And that's what Mikel Arteta was speaking about when speaking about this on... Uh, after the game versus, who was it again? It was against Barcelona. So after the game versus Barcelona, he was speaking about trimming the fat, and this is his exact quote. So we definitely need to we definitely need to trim the squad down a little bit, and we're gonna have to work on that uh, in the coming days as this squad is way too big. So when you guys are seeing reports about guys like Arsenal to sign Neymar, understand that those are not real reports. First of all, they're linked. We're linked to him because. Former Arsenal players and other people are linking us to him. So Joel Bates backs Arsenal to make the signing of the unhappy PSG forward Neymar. So I don't, and also Gilberto Silva has also backed Arsenal to go sign Neymar and said this would be the missing piece. This would be the piece to the puzzle to help Arsenal get to the next level, blah, de, blah, de, blah. Personally, for me, I don't think this will ever happen. And I don't think Arsenal will go out of their way to go sign Neymar at this moment in time. It just doesn't make sense to me. Now, if you guys believe Neymar would be the player who takes us over the hump and would help us win the league, let me know what you guys think. I just think with his wages, the money that it would cost for the transfer fee, and the fact that he might disrupt the player, he might disrupt the dressing room with the fact that he's going to be earning so much wages, might be something that Mikel Arteta and the club might not be willing to do. In addition to that, I feel like our squad is good enough at this moment in time where if we were to add an attacker, why would we add Neymar? I would rather go for a Victor Ozyman or somebody who can actually play as a striker rather than another winger who would just not benefit us in the, in the long run. I know Neymar is a quality player and who am I to turn my nose up to Neymar? But I'm just giving you guys the logic and why I think this won't actually happen. In addition to that, PSG would not be willing to lose Mbappe, Neymar, Messi all in the same transfer window. I don't think that's realistic. But let me know what you guys think. That right there is not an actual link. It is just 
somebody giving their opinion and it turning into this bigger article that than it actually should be. So let's not take into too much to that. But you know what is true? Apparently, Roy Hodgson has made Eddie and Ketia his no, one of his number one targets. Report, uh, this reportedly came uh, came out that Eddie and Ketia, with 14 days to go before the Premier League season, Crystal Palace are looking for their 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 uh, meta replacement. And according to the the bank, uh, the Eagle Beak. Uh, Via Football London, the Eagles are running to sign Eddie Nketiah as Roy Hodgson seeks to bolster his forward options. Uh, re uh, reports state that Arsenal Academy graduate uh, re uh, could be could uh, could be uh, joining them, of course. But they they value the player for around forty million euros, which is about thirty five uh, thirty four million pounds. If they offer us thirty four million pounds for Eddie Nketiah. I will bite their hand off, and that will mean Balogun will stay, Eddie and Ketty will be sold, and he'll be headed to Crystal Palace. He'll stay in the Premier League where he wanted to stay, and we'll be able to see him run his own team, have his own offense, everything around him. I think Balogun would do okay over at Crystal Palace, but at Arsenal, it's just two big boots to fill, and with 14 days left to go before the preseason, I mean the season starts, this might be the perfect opportunity for Arsenal to ship off one of the players that – you know what has been underwhelming for a lot of Arsenal fans in, in his time at Arsenal. He had it was great last season what he did, but really and truly, we need better than Eddie Nketiah as a as a backup to Gabriel Jesus, somebody who can actually push him and say, you know what, I'm here to take your spot. And maybe Balogun can be that guy. Personally, for me, I don't think Balogun will be will be an Arsenal player come the new season because I think Eddie Nketiah will end up staying. But if you can ship off Eddie Nketiah, it would be crazy. It would be interesting. And Football London don't really run with reports that are not accurate. So at this moment in time, just to give you guys a quick update once again, what the report says. The report says Crystal Palace are reportedly planning a £35 million bid for Eddie and Ketia. If that bid ever gets submitted, we'll have to wait and see. Now, moving on to the next topic. The next topic is we already know who we have to sell players and everything else. But before we go any further, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's get this video past at least 100 likes. And of course, if you want to become a channel member, you can become a channel member. It's absolutely just one pound. I was going to say free, but it's not free. <laughs> uh, then Arsenal, our, uh, the Arsenal news today is that Arsenal have rejected a 30 million pound uh, bid uh, from uh, from Inter Milan. Inter Milan have bid 35, uh, 30, million, uh, 30 million pounds for Balogun, which is about 35 million euros. For Balogun, and of course, Arsenal do not want that. Arsenal want a little bit more than that. Arsenal, the reason why we rejected it, he scored 20 goals last season in the French league. If he was playing for Rems, Rems would be able to sell him for much more than that. The player is a quality player. The fact that we he, we don't necessarily need him as much as other teams uh, would if if they had a player of his of his many goals. But personally, for me, if we can get rid of Eddie and Ketia and we can keep Balogun, it makes sense. But I do believe Balogun will be the one that gets sold because I don't know if there's just that big of a market for Eddie and Ketia at this moment in time. It just seems like it's only Crystal Palace. West Ham are somewhat interested and Brighton are somewhat interested too. But if Brighton are more interested in Balogun and they would more likely, the, the Premier League clubs would rather have Balogun than Eddie and Ketia. So they're going to test the waters. Uh, reports came out that 30 million pound bid was rejected. Arsenal won around 50 million pounds, but they might meet in the middle of around 45. This is just too this is just too small of a bid to be accepted from Arsenal at this moment in time. It wouldn't make sense. Now moving on to the next topic, Mohamed Kudos would prefer a move to Arsenal over Chelsea this summer transfer window, and he would come in as uh, right wing cover for Bukayo Saka and also somebody who can play across the front three who can fill in for Martin Odegaard who can fill in for Kai Havertz in the in the in the right eight position who can fill in in the left uh, left wing position if anything ever happens to Trussard or Martinelli or Emil Smith Rowe and at this moment in time we are not going to be getting this signing over the line anytime soon the reality is we just have too many squad players and in order for Arsenal to get the the 40 million pound bid accepted and everything else that won't be a problem but what the problem for Arsenal is we don't want to bring in more squad players before we can actually shift out some of our players at this moment in time even though Kudos is a quality player he's just not deemed a priority at this moment in time where we would need to go and splash the cash before we make sales so at this moment in time Arsenal are not going to be going out and splashing the cash on any players until we can see some outgoing signings and by then Chelsea might have already made the signing of Mohamed Kudos so it does seem like Although he prefers to join Arsenal, we might miss out on this player 
that is just the current situation and state of this potential situation and signing. So we're gonna have to wait and see what happens there, where 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 it, how that escalates and where it goes from there. Arsenal, of course, want 50 million for Balogun. So if we can get 50 million for Balogun, we can go and sign anybody really and truly uh, of, of, of that 40 million, 35 million pound mark for a backup winger for, right, uh, for Bukayo Saka. So I'm not too concerned at this moment in time of that situation. And it does seem like that eventually will get resolved sooner rather than later. So we're going to have to wait and see how that goes. For now, I'm not too concerned about that. Let's let's just let's just wait and see where, how how things escalate from there. Now, if you guys don't know, yesterday um, Arsene Wenger's statue was an, uh, was unveiled at the Emirates, and boy, was it uh, was uh, it, is it an interesting statue? I'm not really I'm not really one to 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 bash on a statue or anything like that, but I feel like. They missed a trick. They could have made it gold and it would have just looked a little bit better. But let me show you guys what the statue looks like. This is the Arsene Wenger statue and it's going to be near block D as you uh, near there you can see it's just next to next to the entrance D. So it is it is it is quite tall and he's going to be holding up the Premier League title, the, our last Premier League title since uh, since, uh, since then. We haven't had one since, so hopefully we, Mikel Arteta and the boys can deliver one this season. But let me know what you guys think about Arsene Wenger's statue. Do you guys like it? What do you guys think about it? Let me know. But in other in other news, we got some other stuff to going on. There's not too much news going around, lady, ladies and gentlemen. There's just it's been kind of quiet. So I haven't been doing videos every single day, but there is some news on some of some of our younger academy players. Seems like Southampton who have Romeo Lavia and got him from the Man City Academy, are looking to poach Arsenal's Zach Aoi uh, from, from our academy. Uh, I, I, I probably butchered his last name there, but he's been released from Arsenal this summer, and the deal includes compensation for Arsenal due to the player's age. So since he's 19 years old, we're going to get some compensation for him, and he's left Arsenal, and he'll be joining um, them. Now, in other news, Kai Havertz has also spoken about how... Uh, Kai Havertz on attacking the penalty box area from the midfield. I always have, uh, have, what well, I uh, always have to arrive in the box. I think it's important for my position. Also, with my height, I have scored goals. Uh, is part of my game. Hopefully, it works more times, more times in the league. Talking about how many goals he's gonna get on the pitch. He just uh, obviously Kai Havertz talking about how he favors things and. Oasis, <laughs> his favorite karaoke song is Wonderwall from Oasis. Uh, he must be, he, Man City fans love that. By the way, uh, Emma Smith Road turned 23 the other day. Uh, Rafinha, there is Rafinha. What's book? Oh, there's some concerns about, there's some concerns about Zinchenko, by the way. Zinchenko hasn't had a much uh, preseason, much of a preseason. So there's a concern that him coming so back, him coming back so late in preseason might actually be an issue. Now, with him and Declan Rice missing some games ahead of the Community Shield, we uh, they might not play. Let's be honest, Declan Rice and Zinchenko might not play ahead of ahead of the Community Shield game. And for that Community Shield game, I don't know if you should just throw them in. I want. Uh, I know it's not. A, I know it's not a major trophy, but I want to just pick up the first piece of silverware in the season with the Community Shield. I'm not celebrating it, but I'm just saying it's good to beat Man City. We haven't beaten them in so long, so it's probably a good opportunity to beat them, right? Now, um, this right here is actually crazy, but apparently Manchester United have entered the race for Balogun. Yes. Would you sell Balogun to Manchester United, ladies and gentlemen? Manchester United are trying to do everything in their power to get a striker and and Rasmin Hoyland is it could potentially cost them up to seventy million. Would you sell them, Eddie? Uh, would you sell them Balogun? Balogun is apparently on the short list. This is reported by the Independent that Manchester United had Balogun on their short list. I don't believe it for one second. I'm telling you guys, this is silly season. Some of these reports that come out, we we cannot trust them. Personally, for me, I don't think Arsenal would be selling Balogun to Chelsea or Manchester United, although there might be reports. This might be diversion tactics, in my opinion. And of course, Arsenal are suffering some injury scares. We're still waiting for Declan Rice and Zinchenko to come back, right? In, a, in, a, in other news, uh, Mikel Arteta has got to figure out what he's going to do. Uh, a lot of people are... A lot of people rate... Uh, a lot of people rate our players. Mikel Arteta talking about Jorginho being a good 
influence around the team and how he might potentially be a good coach in the future. That's another thing that was spoken about. Uh, quite interesting to see that. Now, there is a report about a defender, but I don't know if this report is accurate because it does seem like this is old news. Uh, Domino Zegreb, defender, 23-year-old. Uh, since we signed Timber, it doesn't really make sense that we'd be still interested in him. But of course, it might just be because we were interested in him in the past that the links are continuously still flowing. But yeah, at this moment in time, Arsenal is set to receive a bid from Milan. We received that bid. We rejected it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. There's nothing more to really talk about, ladies and gentlemen. Everything is done. Fabrizio Romano spoke about the fact that Liverpool and Chelsea are after Lavia and Arsenal have exited the Lavia race. It doesn't seem like we're going to be going in for Lavia anymore. It does seem like we, we have now completely turned our attentions to keeping Thomas Partey and, and the st intentions are to keep him and he's, and he's intended to stay. So yeah, there's no more news to... Uh, there's no more big news uh, or anything else going around at this moment in time. If there's any new big news, I'll let you, I'll be the first to report it and let you guys know on the channel. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick little synopsis and up, update on everything that's going around the arsenal. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to help us get to at least 25K subscribers. Uh, I'm trying to get to 25K subscribers before the season starts, if that's possible. But yeah, for now, I bid you guys adieu and have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day. We're out of here, people. Love for the love.